Good morning. It's the Braden City Council meeting, 8.30 a.m., Wednesday, July 28th. This time we'll call Major Juan Guadalupe, the Salvation Army, to come forward and say our invocation. Please stand. Let's pray. Eternal Father, blessed be your matchless name. Your word says that all things work together for the good of those who love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. God of wisdom, this council seek your help today. Come and let your wisdom fall upon them, O Lord, as they gather for this meeting. Give them clarity so that they can effectively tackle each part of today's agenda. Reveal problems, areas, and show them the best solutions that will apply. Point their eyes to every positive outcome since their last meeting and let these favorable results and developments encourage every heart in this room. Your God help them apply your wisdom as they decide of certain matters and make plans. Enlighten them that they may know how you want them to accomplish their task. Father, I desire your glory and blessing in all they do. Direct their thoughts, words, decisions, and actions toward the right path and help them stay on track. Let your will be done as they plan and make decisions. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And at this time, I'm going to ask a young gentleman that's shadowing today that's interested in politics, Thomas, to lead us in the pledge. Just turn and start us off. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll call the meeting to order. And uh, I had mentioned that there's a young man kind of shadowing today in the past. And as some of us might know, they normally would be sitting up here on the dais with us in a different chair. But obviously, with the conditions we're in today with COVID and stuff, it's probably just best to keep the social distancing the best you can. But it's a 13-year-old young man that's interested in politics that just kind of wants to watch and see what happens. So thank you for being here, Thomas, and thanks for being interested. All right. Um, Tamara, uh, any proclamations? No, sir. All right, and then we do have one presentation um, by Spark Growth, so come forward. And I, I know Mr. Perry had met with the Spark Growth people yesterday and yep. talked, so Stan, good to see you. Good to see you too, Mayor. Good morning, Mayor, City Council, um, Chiefs, and everyone. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me today. So, well, I'm going to give just a quick update on what's going on with us. Um, and uh, my name is Stan Schultes. I'm with Spark Growth. Uh, I know many of you, um, not everyone. Uh, just met Rob yesterday. Thank you for the time. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So, Stan, um, could you step a little closer to the microphone? Sure, sure. Thank you. I was just making sure I could get to the keyboard as well. Right. That's okay. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, Spark Growth is an innovation consulting firm. We've been in the Bradenton area for uh, close to 10 years. Um, one of the things that we do is we run Station 2 Innovation, which is a co-working space and entrepreneur resource center uh, at 9th Street East and, um, and the eastbound side of State Road 64. It's a, it's a city-owned building, the old fire station. A lot of people remember it as that. Uh, Mr. Gallo in the back here uh, even gave us pictures of the old station. So. Uh, what we believe is that entrepreneurship uh, as a vehicle for building sustainable and, and social economies. This is really what we're, we're about at Station 2. Um, so as you probably realize, starting and growing a business and a family takes a lot of resources. So what, what we do is we look at things in a holistic manner. Um, it takes uh, technology, business, funding, and it kind of centers around education. Um, so, so we weave that into everything that, that we do uh, at Spark Growth and also at Station 2. Uh, so Station 2 Innovation, like I said, is a co-working space. Uh, it's a 4,700 square foot, two-story building. 
Uh, it looks a lot different now than it did seven years ago when we, when we got into the building. Uh, it had been vacant for several years. It had been the, um, the Section 8 housing office for a long time. Um, so now we have about 25 companies that work there on a regular basis um, in either in open co-work or they have dedicated desks. Um, and then we have a large community space upstairs that we do um, uh, education events in and meetups and things like that. So uh, the picture on the left is Sarah, my partner, who is actually uh, sitting in Tallahassee right now delivering an RFP to the state this morning, so she couldn't be here. Uh, that was um, um, very soon after we got into the building uh, seven years ago, and the picture on the right was our uh, fifth anniversary ribbon cutting that we did with the chamber uh, late last fall, so on the front porch. So Station 2 is really about capacity building in the, in the community itself. Um, we took advantage of some of the CARE Act dollars that we got uh, last year and we did a renovation, um, you know, put new wood floors in downstairs. So some of these pictures you can see, uh, if you're familiar with the station, um, it has changed quite a bit. I invite any of you who would like to see what it looks like to please come over and, uh, and talk to us. Uh, we're, we're there almost all the time. Um, so we believe that people and businesses thrive in connected communities. I don't know how many times I've said that in front of, you know, in front of audiences, but really it's about, um, you know, building capacity, building um, a, a foundation on which business can grow in a community. So we do a lot of education events that are entrepreneur oriented, um, essentially resources for business growth. Um, and we also host meetups that other people uh, run in the community. And, um, um, the picture on the right is is a picture of our big space upstairs. Uh, it's you know we can seat 50 people at a meal up there. It's a it's a it's a really nice resource to have. Uh, we used to scratch around looking for places that we could meet in the past. Um, this is a quote that Satya Nadella um, said. He's the he's currently the president and CEO of Microsoft, um, and he's talking about the role of technology in economic development. And technology is very important, but all, the, all of the other factors um, that, that I talked about, funding and education, but it's all built on a foundation of government. Government really provides the basis for the economic development in a place. So um, I, I know I'm probably not telling any of you anything that you don't already know, but this is really what we're, what we're based on, what, what we believe at Station 2 and how we um, conduct business over there. So over the years, we have run a number of different community-focused events from Bar Camp, which uh, morphed into something called Da Vinci's Fair, which we were doing with the Manatee School System uh, over at MTC um, for 10 years. Um, we ran a Thought Leaders Conference in town for six years, uh, bringing people from around the world here to the Performing Arts Center. Um, to events like this, When We All Win, we did at National Entrepreneurship Week uh, last year. Well, we brought people from the entire uh, uh, innovation and entrepreneur ecosystem here to the Bradenton area. And it never ceases to amaze me um, that um, people who come here say, well, yeah, my grandmother lived in Anna Maria and, and uh, I, I went through there years ago, but I haven't been back, but wow, has it changed? It's really awesome. And um, when we were at the uh, Performing Arts Center a couple of years ago for uh, one of our sessions, um, um, Tony Collins, who I think I'll, some of you may know, he worked with the city and the county for a number of years as a consultant. We're standing up on the second floor of the Performing Arts Center. He said, where is the sand pile? And I said, you know, you're standing on it. <laughs> you know, you, a lot of you may remember that. So, you know, a lot has happened here in the Bradenton area over, over the years. So uh, to the point of why I'm here today, um, we, uh, coming up, we have a financial and innovation development uh, conferences, a couple of them coming up, with the Office of Financial Regulation, the state of Florida, um, Commissioner Weigel, Russell Weigel, will be down here on Thursday, August 12th. Uh, we will send some notifications so that you're, you all can, can come to that. What he's doing is looking at uh, reforming legislation at the state level to support small business and entrepreneurship. And he's looking for feedback from the entrepreneur community um, and the business community. Uh, so what we're doing is partnering with the, with the chamber. They said, we don't usually do that. But, but when they got a look at what this event was about, uh, you know, they're all about uh, legislative affairs. And we have one of the strongest 
chambers in the state and their legislative branch is really powerful uh, when, when they go to Tallahassee. So they said, yes, we will, we will co-host this with you. Uh, we're, all, we're doing it also with the, um, the um, financial access, the Manatee, what has been the Manatee um, Community Federal Credit Union, they're a CDFI. So it's a um, um, co-sponsored. So we're doing it in, uh, it's a, actually a road show that we're bringing uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Weigel down for. So he'll be here um, uh, at, the, at the chamber um, on the morning of August 12th, and then we're hauling him up to Tampa to Embark Collective, which is uh, um, um, in the Water Street District that um, uh, Jeff Vinnick and his crew have put together. So that's a, um, you know, giving an opportunity for the rest of the entrepreneur community to participate in that. And then, then we are hosting this fall the FBIA, which is the Florida Business Incubator Association. We are members of that. We are not currently running a business incubator at Station 2. We're really just an entrepreneur resource center, but we're bringing the, the incubator association down here for their annual conference um, you know, statewide. And what we're going to do is present, we've got a panel, and we're going to do uh, kind of a deep dive on the funding continuum. This is how we fund small business in the, in the region. So that's happening on Thursday, September 16th. Um, we're going to do um, an event, I think, at Pier 22 in the evening on Thursday, and you know, so we'll see the sunset, you know, over the over the water. So the rest of the the people who work in the rest of the state can see just how beautiful um, Bradenton is, and then um, um, the individual business capacity development with the CDFI. So what we're doing is these two events. Um, so my ask today is that um, we have a line item in the uh, in the city budget, which is uh, uh, in the economic development budget for five thousand uh, dollars. Last year, we did not come and ask for that because of the COVID uh, breakdown, but we had uh, we had gotten that money the several years before, and we have a couple of events that we're looking to, to host here. So we would like to um, uh, you know to have city council um, consider providing that money to us again this year. Rob, Mayor, Council. Um, just a couple of comments. I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Sarah and Stan yesterday and spend about an hour with them. And it was one of my first delves into economic development here in, in Bradenton. And I was very, very impressed with uh, what they're doing, what they know. They know their stuff. And they're doing things that, that are being done in other leading edge communities. And I definitely think there's a void from an economic development department that they that uh, Spark is filling on behalf of the city and the community uh, uh, wide with economic development. Economic development, there's really three legs to it. It, it, it. It's new business, new locations, expanding existing business, and it's growing business. Mm -hmm. Those three components, if you look at it from a government perspective, that's what we can support. Um, these folks are on the economic development, entrepreneurial development side of things. And you talked about that triangle. And it's really important to have the assistance of the educational uh, uh, infrastructure of the community, the community college, the, the colleges, the other types of educational programs uh, and everything else connected in, into it with the, with, with the interplay um, as it relates to business development and technology. And really, when you look at cities, what they're doing with innovation and, and entrepreneurial development, they're bringing together all of these forces. Mm -hmm. And businesses need two things to grow. They need access to capital and they need operational expertise and education. It's, it's fairly that simple. That's what we can help with. This is a fairly modest ask on my behalf and I'd really like to look at moving forward with, with exploring um, how, how robust the city wants to be in that concept of economic development. I think it's worth kind of learning a little bit about. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. So um, any questions by the council? Yes, Ms. Barnaby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Schultz, mm -hmm. do you have an estimated attendance? And I'm interested in both our local people attending and a statewide attendance. How, I mean, is it, is it just going to stay the Tampa Bay region? Is it? Are you going to be sending? Are you casting a wide net? Um, uh, yeah. So the the road show that I spoke of, uh, Commissioner Weigel coming down here is to is to speak to the local community. Um, we uh, we have a capacity of eighty at the chamber. Um, so so that's the size of the group. Um, it'll it'll mostly be local people here for that. The Florida Business Incubation Association is drawing people from around the state 
generally we get a um, between 30 and 40 people um, and um, we will have some external events that the community can come to for that um, thank you you're welcome any other questions mr. Ruff yeah, I just want to comment um, thanks uh, Mr. Perry for your observation you know that we've been very supportive of uh, uh, of uh, Sarah and Stan for you know since day one including yeah. um, you know when they approached us on a building mm -hmm. I mean to this date or, or you're not uh, what what type of arrangement do we have on that building it's just it's a 10-year lease yeah is, but you're you're you paying market rate or you No, pay, we're paying a dollar a year that's that's I just wanted to make point that out mm -hmm. that we've been yes extremely generous absolutely and, and, and whenever <laughs> you've asked for the continuing funds we've given it to you just mm -hmm. to to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. So yep. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Okay. Yes, ma'am, as coachman. Thank you, Mr. Is there any effort to market towards the locals more so? Is there, is that? Well, that's really what Station 2 is about. It's, a, it's the local economic development community, uh, local entrepreneurs, that's what we focus on. Um, you know, bringing people from other places um, helps both expose Bradenton to the world, but also brings external ideas here. Um, I guess what I'm asking is, how do you get the word out? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of it's social media. You know, we have a newsletter that we send out. Um, um, you know, we're out in the community all the time talking to people. We're chamber members, and, and we're members of a number of different associations, so we're always out networking. Um, what I'd like to do actually is invite you over to the station and perhaps you can meet some of the members that we have over there. It's a pretty diverse group and um, um, basically what it is is it's, it's small business people or individual entrepreneurs that um, need a place to land, you know, to work, to have a business address and to uh, collaborate together. So what everyone has something that, that they can teach and everyone has something that they need you know, that they can learn from others uh, because not everybody knows everything about running a business. So it's really important to have a network and a community around you. Great. I look forward to it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Perry, is this going to be in a, the current year budget or is this asking for next year's October 1 budget? Ms. Mayor, I believe it's an existing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it, I believe it's a year over year. It's the mm -hmm. $5,000 that's in the legislative budget to give out so yes. um, the funds are there and as well as it is in next year's budget so any further questions I'm, yes sir I Mr. You, asked, you were here year before last and asked for 2500 yeah we only did one event that year okay yeah yeah you good memory yeah we we try to take um, care of the resources that we've got so we didn't ask for more than we needed Mr. Mayor. yes ma'am Miss Barnaby at uh, this time, I'd like to make a motion to support the request by um, Station 2, uh, uh, Sarah Hand and Stan Schultz, uh, to support the upcoming Financial and Innovation <laughs> Development Program as presented to us today. For $5,000. For $5,000. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. We'll st start the vo vote in Ward 4. Yes. Five? Yes. One? Yes. Two? Yes. Three? Yes. Thank you. Carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Um, at this time, uh, citizen comments will be accepted on any non-agenda item. Comments will be accepted on the public hearing and agenda items at the appropriate time. Is there any citizen comment? Any citizen comment? Seeing none at this time, we'll move on. Ms. Melton. We're asking for approval for the consent agenda today, items A and B. Right. Chair will entertain a motion or? Uh, move to approve the consent agenda. Second. All right. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? We'll start the vote in Ward 5. Yes. One. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. All right, carries unanimously. All right, moving on, Mrs. Melton, I guess we're moving on to Mrs. Singer. Um, <clears throat> good morning, uh, Mayor and Council. 
uh, Robin Singer, Planning and Community Development Director. Um, this is second reading and public hearing of an ordinance uh, related to um, our acceptance of the FEMA um, new floodplain um, mapping and uh, changes to the code regarding um, uh, manufactured homes. Do I need to read the title into the? Mrs. Melton. Yes, actually, this is quasi-judicial, so we need to administer an oath. Uh, this should be legislative. Right. I'm yeah. sorry, it said quasi-judicial on. Oh, the I apologize. Uh, if we on the agenda, but that, it, it is. It's fine to just continue. Yes, it's okay. legislative item. Okay. Ordinance three zero eight one, second reading and public hearing, an ordinance of the City of Bradenton, Florida, providing for amendments to the City of Bradenton land use regulations, Appendix A. Floodplain management for the purpose of updating the city's floodplain management regulations consistent with current regulatory guidelines, specifically amending Chapter 1, Section 102.3, basis for establishing floodplain hazard areas in Section 107.4, historic buildings, mm -hmm. Chapter 2, definitions, Section 202 definitions, and Chapter 3, flood resistant development. Amending section 301.2, detached accessory structures, and amending 304.4, elevation, manufactured homes, deleting section three, providing administrative amendments to the Florida Building Code in its entirety, providing for applicability, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. And Mayor, there has been no changes since first reading, so. Okay. All right, and this would be a public hearing, Mr. Rudisell? Yes, Mr. Mayor. All right, so at this time, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak? Anyone wishing to speak? Anyone wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Chair will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 3081. Okay, to approve, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, Mr. Roth, I heard you the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, uh, any further discussion? <clears throat> All right, we'll st start the vote in Ward 1. Yes. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. 4? Yes. 5? Yes. Thank you. Approved 5 to 0. All right, moving on. Looks like uh, Chief Bevan. <clears throat> Sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I think before you, you have a request. Um, this is a, I think we just have to discuss it as part of a public hearing. We just had to post this. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is funding that gets allotted to us every year. Um, we uh, usually use it for a variety of things that fit within the confines of it. Um, everything um, from overtime to um, different investigative tools. You'll see enumerated uh, a few things. I don't necessarily need to go back over them again, but just in short, um, a license plate reader, we already have one. Um, this basically assists us with the triangulation in the county. You know, the county has a few, Holmes Beach has some, Palmetto has some. Um, these are great tools when we're doing investigations, typically of a higher, um, altitude to, to figure out if we're looking for somebody, you know, in a shooting or a homicide or whatnot. Um, so we're, they're a great tool to have. Um, we're looking for some cameras just to utilize during investigations. They're uh, pretty quick and easy to apply. Um, and um, we think they're necessary to continue doing business. And so hopefully you agree and we'll approve them. All right. So um, do we Want to open the public hearing first and then go to council comments? Okay. So we'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Anyone wishing to speak? <coughs> anyone wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Chair will entertain a motion or comments to approve. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. At this time, I'd like to move to approve the request by Police Chief Bevan. Uh, with the uh, agenda item that has been uh, submitted to us, the uh, approval to submit the fiscal year 2021 JAG grant to the DOG to purchase the items listed on 
the supporting documents. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second, second Mrs. Coachman. All right, discussion? Yeah. Mr. Roth? Yeah, so Chief, um, is these eight, eight cameras, do, do we have any in existence? Is this <coughs> eight new ones or? We do have cameras. We have a variety of different the, types. These, these particular cameras? Um, these particular ones, no. These are, uh, you know, I'll tell you, probably about every six months, uh, the technology improves. The battery life is longer. The, the view is better. Um, it's, it's just to kind of add to what we have. Um, they're pretty, pretty cheap, yeah. relatively cheap, and they're um, pretty easy to apply in an instant. So, um and I saw that there's solar panels involved. Are these attached to cars and a panel going to the roof, or how's this working? Um, typically, these would uh, be exterior cameras if uh, we needed to maybe put one on a pole. Oh, okay. Or, uh, you know, they're, they're covert surveillance cameras. Okay. The goal is to not um, be huge and visible, but just small, um, throw them up there and 24 hour type battery life and okay. see what we get with a live feed. Uh huh. And, you know, I, I say that cautiously. I don't want people to think that we, we slap cameras up all over the place <laughs> for any reason whatsoever. These are um, geared exclusively towards um, criminal issues that present itself yeah. that we are trying to solve. Right. right. But, but mm -hmm. cameras, cameras are a modern-day public safety device. They're, we're, we're, they're an incredible tool, we're and we're just a lot trying of money to... And the CRAs to upgrade our park because we want our park to be safe. So. I, I'm, right. I'm all for it. Just trying to Thank you. leverage that, yes. Anyone else? All right, so we have a motion and a second. I'll start the vote in Ward 2. Yes. 3. Yes. 4. Yes. 5. Yes. 1. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> all right, first off, uh, we'd like to officially welcome Mr. Rob Perry. He's been here eight days now, and he keeps coming back, so hopefully he <laughs> likes it that way, but um, doing a great job, and really, I think, just from the, the few people I've talked to that you've met in the public and all of that, they're, they're very excited as we are. So thank you, Mr. Perry, you're up. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome to Bradenton. Uh, I've just had a great experience and, and really look forward to, to uh, a long uh, and successful and enjoyable and productive uh, tenure here. Thanks so much to everybody. Uh, the matter before Council is, is the setting of the tentative millage rate. There's a memo attached that basically gets into the, uh, the, the revenues uh, as it relates to what we have to report um, in the trim system to the state. It highlights basically that there's two public meetings. They're scheduled for September 9th and September 21st. They're called 501 uh, meetings. And of course, we have to comply with uh, different meetings that are going on at the same time as it relates to uh, trying to schedule them in. So we came up with those dates to, to comply with those particular requirements. Um, in substance, it basically uh, talks about recommending that we keep the tentative millage rate at 5.8976. Uh, it hasn't, uh, uh, it's been at that rate since 2014 from what I understand and reviewed. And I'm asking for a motion for approval to uh, report uh, the verifications to the, the State Revenue Department TRIMS uh, verifications and set those meetings. That's the substance of the motion. All right, and I think that uh, one of the things as we've talked about over all the years and for our new council people, that um, we, it, you can change it if you come up with something. You can raise it or lower it. Raising it is very difficult because you have to go through a lot. To lower it can be done as you finish off some of the budget process. So this is, as he said, setting of the tentative millage rate. Um, and one of the things that, that Mr. Perry and I've done, and, and I know he's gone over with others, is met with all department heads and gone through the budget almost line item by line item at times, and really the, the department heads have done a great job with their staff at bringing that to us and really looking forward to um, a good budget and, and some good things happening for our city as it comes forward. So um, we appreciate that. Mr. Sanders? Uh, <coughs> The uh, assessed rate we had uh, estimated at 5.1 percent, has that changed or is it the same? Or do you know? The assessed rate is the same. The revenue associated with it will be a, will be a modest increase, I think is the best way to, discuss, uh, to, to characterize that. Um, we'll have a little bit more money and it'll be up to you all as policymakers to decide how that's allocated 
and decisions regarding that. Um, and that budget process, as Mayor pointed out, will start in earnest with council in the upcoming months. Myself and Mayor have met with the departments and, and they have done a good job of uh, bringing me up to speed, being in a good posture, um, and, and kind of honing it down and fine tuning it, but ultimate fine tuning is done by council. So again, it's just setting the tentative and then it'll be really wordsmith through over the next month. I, I thought we were supposed to get a report back from the assessor's office if, if, the, if the assessment was around 5%, that we, we thought it was around 5% this year. But you mean they what, what our increases were going to be? increases were Right, increased. yeah. And I think that's come in. Um, Is that coming in? Know, yeah, some of it's, it's, it's in the process of everything coming in, but some of our, our half-cent sales tax, <coughs> of them, the monies have come in from the state, the gas tax has come in. That's one thing that I know that I think the county, so we see how much more we're getting, and that's the process that we're going through now that, that uh, obviously, you know, the budget that was set before was a very tentative one, and a very lean one. And that's one of the things that Mr. Perry has been going through with the department heads with me of what some wants would be and what some opportunity with some increased money. So that's that's where it's gonna come. That's why I'm gonna ask to call out, at the end of this meeting I was gonna say it, but I'll say it now. I'd like to have a budget or a workshop next week to go over some of that with the council so we can see, as well as everyone here can see where we're at and if, if what needs to change or not change. But that's up to the council as we go through it. Uh, Mr. Mayor just, and, and Councilman Sanders, we have, th there's some, we, we have a requirement to report in there the millage rate I know. within time. As far as the increase goes, we have been told with fairly certainty uh, some of the revenue increases, but there's still some on, on two particular taxes that we need to finalize. But this in and of itself, the action we're asking for is to meet statutory requirements regarding the millage rate. We'll be getting you that information literally within probably days and, of course, a workshop to follow for discussion. Well, I, I was just asking yeah, and if I just we've gotten yes, an sir. update from yep. then because we thought it was going to be 5.1%. Yep. As we all know, the millage rate is remaining the same as, as from a politician says that we're not raising taxes, but in reality we, there is a tax raise because the, their, the, their, their bill is going to go up because of the assessed value. Now we have a cap here, which helps, you know, homesteaders, right. but snowbirds were going to get a bigger bill. Yes, so sir. I just wanted to know if, we, if we'd if we had an update from the <coughs> assessor's office on yes, that. <coughs> and I, I would say I haven't seen anything updated from what we originally got as a tentative, right. but um, I think we'll, we'll all be confident in working through things that there's some opportunity to do some things, so, um, which, You've been on this council with me any time, Mr. Roth, probably the longest. It's been a few years when I've asked to see if we can streamline some things at times. So that is going to be one of my suggestions as we go forward, what we can do, maybe not to make those bills as high as they should be, but still protecting city services and growing some things that we probably need to do. So any other questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Roth. Well, just on, on, on that note that, um, you know, I, I look at my tax bill every year and, uh, you know, uh, been in my property for a long time, homesteaded, so I, I, I probably, you know, and benefiting from the, from the, my stability. But um, also, when I look at, on percentage-wise, I mean, by far the biggest chunk of my tax bill goes to the school board, and it's many taxing districts, and then it goes to the uh, uh, sheriff's department, which you know, and and then it goes to the county. And then the smallest item, you know, on my tax bill, we're, we're just before the mosquito board, you know. So, uh, $25. You know, um, but, you know, by far the smallest item on my tax bill of the major taxing agencies is the city of Bradenton. And when you, when you take into account everything the city does for the citizens of this county, uh, of, the of the city, I mean, um, you know, uh, it's, we're, yep, we're, the county too. yeah, well, to, to be honest, we're, we're we're a big benefit to the county because they you know they 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 require they receive our tax funds but the city takes care of all the um, the day to day operations so I I've never backed away from uh, you know keeping the millage rate um, where it's at I think it's it's at a good spot it's it, it works for us uh, you know with the tax valuation that goes up well I I just I just consider that's us doing our job well 
if we were doing it poorly, the millage, the, 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 <coughs> uh, the valuations would go down. Um, so that's just uh, the rewards of doing a good job and the money is just basically put into the cost of living increase because basically everything that we do is done by a human being and they all get paid as they should. So is that a motion? And the motion is that we, say that. The, motion, the motion is <laughs> that is uh, we keep the tentative millage rate at 5.8976 and then we set the first public hearing for September 9th at 5.01 p.m. 5.01 p.m. and the second public hearing at September 21st at 5.01 p.m. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right, we'll start the vote in Ward 3. Yes. Four? Yes. Five? Yes. One? Yes. Two? Yes. Thank you. Approved five to zero. All right, and then um, any unfinished business, Mr. Perry? That you know of since I'm aware of. That you were there. So, all right. Um, any unfinished business? Anyone? All right. We'll move on. Council reports. We'll start in Ward Four. I have nothing to report. All right, thank you. Ward Five. Well, I have to say something. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just uh, excited to see uh, Mr. Perry in that seat. And secondly, this will um, make our public works director. Happy. I'm, oh, I'm happy. looking. Happy. <laughs> I, I have noticed uh, the brightness uh, happening uh, inch by inch in uh, my area. So I thank you for that and all the work that's been going on. Thank you, Chiefs, as always, um, for what you do. And <laughs> that's it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Coachman. Ms. Coker? Yes, uh, just a, a couple of little things. I know I'm sure I'm not the only one. We're getting a lot of phone calls about our issues with uh, solid waste pickup. And I just would like to encourage the citizens to sign up for the red alert system. I think that the more information that's out there, the better. Um, the more informed you are, the less anxiety you'll have. I know that Public Works is working very hard. I'm sure we're going to hear more about it. And uh, it, it's somewhat of a fluid situation that seems to be changing daily. So if you could sign up for that red alert, I think you'll, it'll help all of us. Um, and I also um, want to thank the chief um, after our last meeting. The, the site over at the new uh, fire station is looking better. We're anxious for it to be finished, but I want to thank you for having them at least clean the site up a little bit. And um, that's all I have. Thank you. One comment probably with the red alert, and I know we've been working with Jeannie, our PIO. Um, we did get some complaints about that we were doing too much because they were felt that the red alert might have been more of a, a drastic or a emergency hurricane, but we felt that that through the city staff and that that and through public works that some of those, you know, are for to get people information out there. So um, we hope that we didn't offend anybody, but I think that it's important to keep that that the red alert is getting you information, not only emergency information. So um, we will try not to do it as, as just every day, but I think it's important that we do that to keep the citizens informed. So um, if you have not signed up, please sign up. And, and uh, I, you know, it is true, you get three alerts with, with one situation because computer, text, and call but you don't have to do all three if you don't want. Um, and some of us that in the city live in different areas that you might not have garbage pickup because you live in a condo. So it may not be as crucial, but take the good with sometimes the, the not so good at times. But we appreciate everyone and, and uh, we appreciate your comments when you give them to us, so thank you. Ms. Barnaby? Oh, are we done? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. McClellan. <laughs> I think we are, and I hate, don't like the word victim, but I, we're probably victims of our success in that the garbage pickup, recycle pickup, and yard waste pickup has been something that many citizens have felt for a long time. It was one of the best services that they got from the city. I know that your phone operators are getting an earful, just as we all are up here. Um, I, I want you to 
to express to them that we appreciate them continuing to take the calls and to be as courteous as they can be. And I would like to encourage the citizens, let's be courteous. If you, if you, and I understand you're frustrated. I'm frustrated too. I can tell you Mr. McClellan is really frustrated. But I need to tell you, if you were calling your mama and talking that way, <laughs> that would not work. So please, I understand you're frustrated. Mr. McClellan, I understand that, that our crews were working on Saturday until about 7 o'clock that night and still did not get all the way through with what they needed to do. Can yeah, you address we, that, please? We had um, a ded dedicated crew. There were four different trucks running um, citywide on Saturday. They started at 6 a.m. and ran until about 7 p.m. Um, didn't run out of light, run out of energy. Um, there were several who were on the brink of heat exhaustion <laughs> because yard waste pickup, because that's all we were doing Saturday was yard waste pickup. Um, and it is the most labor intensive aspect of, of the solid waste collection process. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to complete the entire city le uh, on that one day. Um, and that's kind of led to the decision that I had to make earlier this week. Um, essentially, if, if you'd like to think of it as our solid waste manager has to deal with a deck of cards that he's he's given every morning when he shows up to work how many people show up how many people call in sick how many people are out on vacation all of those things play into the number of individuals that he has available and has to shuffle the deck every day and in a perfect world it would be the same number of cards every day and it usually isn't and that made it difficult to to where I got to the point where the confusion that we were creating by not being able to be consistent was more of a problem than anything else. And so the idea of going to the bi-weekly on recycle and yard waste only, garbage is not impacted by that. And that's, <laughs> I think that's part of the misinformation that is out there is when a, a, a news article gets out that says garbage collection is going to bi-weekly, um, people's attention to reading an entire article to understand that that does not impact their residential garbage, it's only yard waste and recycle, leads to more confusion. Um, so we hope it's a temporary fix. We have worked with HR and with Mr. Perry to come up with a program for our CDL drivers that we will present at the next council meeting. Unfortunately, it was too late to get it on our agenda for this week uh, that we hope will partially address the problem and give our solid waste folks the ability to be more, uh, more of a competitor in terms of keeping people on staff. But it is an industry-wide problem. Um, I randomly picked, um, I, was, I was looking online for um, my aunt passed away in New Jersey and I didn't know where she lived so I, I had pulled it up and looked at, uh, on the internet for her hometown in Jersey and the very first article that popped up was solid waste <laughs> resumes its normal cycle after a hiatus of, and so it's everywhere. Um, CDL drivers. Uh, I was driving home last night and heard the story on the news about uh, the potential for fuel shortages for the airline industry, directly related to the lack of CDL drivers. Um, it, it's, it's a problem. So we are dealing with it as best we can, um, and we will continue to monitor the program as, and update it as soon as we can back to a, a normal mode of operation, but we think that this is the best alternative for us to be able to bring consistency and still be able to provide the service to our, to our customers. Well, and Mr. McClellan, I also know that, that you're working closely with our HR department, but sometimes people don't think about the fact that <coughs> you can't put just anybody behind a two-ton vehicle that drives through neighborhoods. Well, even, even with that, even when you hire somebody new, you don't just give them the keys to the truck and say, go pick up the garbage. There's a training process. They have to learn the routes. Again, that's part of the problem. We end up with people who get missed, um, and we encourage people to call to tell us they've been missed, and we will go get them. But when people are learning a new route, um, we joke all the time about the city boundaries being as bizarre as humanly possible. 
Um, the same goes for the routes that these guys have to drive. Um, and I know people get confused when they see two trucks pass each other in the same area. Um, but that's the nature of the beast because trucks are going to the landfill once they're full. Other trucks are coming in behind them. Uh, so there's overlap in that route, route running to be able to pull this off. So um, it, it's, a, it's a complicated dance that's done every day. Um, and I give kudos to our guys because, again, Saturday was um, an exhaustive day because it was hot Saturday. Um, and even, even the superintendent of solid waste drove a truck all day that day to, to, to help out. So. Nothing so. else, Mr. Mayor, right, from me. Yep, for, uh, so, Jim, while we're on that situation, the temporary situation that we're in, obviously, <coughs> is what you're trying to get us out of, is as we go forward in the future, is there ways you can bring to this council to maybe streamline some things in the future that would give give us better services and not you don't have to answer that right now but maybe it, think about it and there there are I mean our our solid waste folks have been looking at um, you know the way in which our services are collected is um, in need of some upgrade in terms of how how it's delineated for instance um, it it would make more sense potentially for us to collect all of the west side of town one day and all of the east side the next day and all of the west side and all of the east side. Right now, we're, we're intermingled and there's, there's means for efficiency that we, so we're working on developing those and I'd be happy to bring those forward when we're finalized with how we can improve that layout. So it's not just a temporary fix to then get back to another situation. Hopefully we'll come up with a plan. Correct. And it may be a change, but it's a plan change. Correct. So, okay, good, perfect. Mr. Roth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first off, I'd like to um, thank the uh, uh, planning department for the work that we did with the um, uh, the item that we passed today uh, for the, the floodplain regulations. Um, most people it, most people aren't aware, you know, in the city of Bradenton, a lot a lot of our residents um, are required to have flood insurance because they live in a floodplain. Um, this this was to keep us, uh, you know, with changing regulations from national flood insurance, um, the, uh, you know, this keeps our rating to obtain or maintain a class rating of eight or better. Um, I, I know that I, I looked at my new flood bill, which, flood insurance bill, which, which consistently goes up, but if you look at it carefully, I think there was a $400 discount for our, for our flood rating. So um, if we weren't doing this, it would even be worse. So, um, you know, this is, definitely for the best interest of uh, a good portion of our taxpayers. Um, secondly, uh, uh, I'll wait for Jim. Uh, this, I did, uh, Mr. Mayor, I asked you er earlier in the week that with everything that's going on with COVID and the unvaccinated, did you check with the health department? Because I was curious of yes, whether yeah. we could get a rating on where we are with zip codes. and. Right, I talked with uh, Dr. Bensey and she was going to get me back some information, which she hasn't. Obviously, we've seen some of of the the recent things that happened nationally over uh -huh. the last day or so um, but she has not got back with me on okay it's individual zip codes and i don't know they're you know, obviously you can't talk about people because right it's no no us, we but, can't do that but, but um, i'm waiting to hear back from her but i think one of the things while you bring it up is obviously all of us have individual rights which i think this yeah, council absolutely. has stuck with the whole time so when you talk or when you do something take your own personal responsibility as we know right. And, and again, it's a choice, and I don't think anybody anymore stigmatizes anyone if they wear a mask or not. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's an individual yeah. choice. And, and as we've seen, some vaccinated individuals have gotten sick, it just hasn't been as severe right. so far. Right. So I would always say, you know, get your, I would suggest personally get your vaccinations, mm -hmm. do what you do to protect yourself and others, but you control what you do, so that's important. Absolutely. And the, only, the reason I was bringing this up is the, the, the new regulations from the CDC is saying, you know, for those of us that are vaccinated, you know, uh, of whether we should go back to wearing masks and everything. And, and, and the requisite is, uh, well, uh, you know, if you're in a community where it's on the rise and or there's a large portion of unvaccinated, well, we don't know mm -hmm. that one figure, but I think the health department would know 
approximately how many not not naming names right. but how many how much of our pop are we in a are we in an area where most people are vaccinated in which case we're in good shape if half of our population is not vaccinated then we're like you know middle ground if most people aren't well then we're in a hazard area and the we only, should know that right the only thing that i've seen and i think that the implication that i got and i won't speak for her obviously yeah. that the uh they know the percentage of the whole town but i don't know that it's broken down Okay. By a specific oh, that's, area. I, that's yeah. what I haven't heard yet. That's um, I, I, I have no idea right. where we are. Right. And so I, I think that'd be interesting to know. I, I think our citizens would like to know, or at least some of them. So if we can get into it, yeah. Because again, I think when you go to certain areas, if you say this room mm -hmm. compared to right. other rooms, and, and again, no one's going to know because right. you can't ask. You know, well. and that's one of the things that, as a, from a government standpoint, we can't ask. But we just suggest, in, in my opinion. So, no, okay. and I will get more once I get more. I'll let Thank you, you know. Thank you. Yep. Thank Can you. I make a Please. comment on that? Yes, ma'am. The only thing is, I, I, I think that the the solution is obviously the more people that can be vaccinated, the more. And when you start talking about requiring masks again, I think it undermines where we need to be going. So, I, 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 I think the CDC flip flopping all the time is is part of the problem. Yeah. So, um, I would. I'm not really in favor of going back to masks, but I think it's a personal choice, and I totally agree. If somebody wants to wear it, I, there's no stigma to it. I, I respect that. And and I and I wasn't. No, I didn't. Yeah, I, I was not yeah. suggesting that. I was just saying that that I think that, uh, you know, as I said, people need to, people are curious as to what they should personally do. Yeah. And um, you know, and if they're, if, if they're if they're if they're going well, absolutely, but. But what they're saying too is for people that have uh, done the right thing and got vaccinated, um, you know, now there's there's you know uh, recommendations from a higher level coming in that even if you're vaccinated, if you're in a high risk area, if you're in a high risk area, that you should um, you know uh, be masking up for for public health. Well, if people choose that they want to do that, mm -hmm. you know, they need information. Am I in a high risk area? I, I have no idea whether we're in a. I, I would hope we're in a. Uh, I would hope that we're in a low risk area from from what I've seen. But I I don't know whether what our what our area is. That's all I'm asking is for for information yeah. of what are what are our stats. I mean I'm, I'm I always want to know what our stats are on just about everything. That being that being said, that's all. I just 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 information so okay. we could report to others. Um, uh, uh, Jim the. Um, the current budget that's coming up um, has our uh, sidewalk uh, budget going up considerably, uh, which thank you and, and, and you know, can't wait for it. Um, I'm here, you know, the sidewalks are, are, are pitiful and not getting better daily. Um, and so what I'm, and I just got a couple calls on, on uh, there's one, one was over in a village where someone removed a telephone pole. So now there's a hole in the sidewalk. and. You know, we're, we're going to need to take care of that. So what I was going to say is knowing that we're moving forward on the budget and knowing that we have this increase, which is going to allow us to just get started much the way the road work was, is there anything we can do? Um, and then knowing that in the um, building industry that, you know, workers, uh, contractors, cement are in shortage, is there anything that we can do to line up in advance so that when we pass the budget, we can hit the ground running? Yeah, we're in the process of putting together a, um, an RFP to go out for a contractor to do continuing services just for sidewalk concrete work. We hope to have that contract in place and ready to go so that October 1st we can say, here's your first sidewalk, get going. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and then um, lastly, uh, same question, same area. Um, I've noticed in my, as, as, as things are, you know, we're doing the best we can with the solid waste and everything like that. I, I've noticed two areas where I think that uh, we can put it back on property owners. Um, there's a, an apartment building um, that is just like compounding our pain by just throwing tons of crap out, just just ridiculous, and, and just in a. So I mean, I know we've talked about if there's any way that we have regulations on. On them, and, and you know, that, or or can, do we need some? On you know, they should they need to take a little bit of responsibility themselves. I mean, I think that if they're going to evict somebody uh, and throw their crap out, and they should do it in a manner to where it, you know papers don't fly down the street. And uh, you know, I mean, it's just a matter of, of public safety. And then also, 
I have a uh, senior care home that we've taught we've done we've done our part to get them like a better dumpster and everything but their stuff is piling up and literally once again they're not even trying to get stuff in the can <laughs> in, in in our you know in our brand new city authorized dumpster the trash is just flowing you know blowing down the alleyway that I, I think we really need to regulate some of these commercial properties on you have a responsibility to not be a nuisance to the neighborhood do I need do we need to look into that on new ordinances are there ordinances in place that aren't aren't being enacted or well I, I would I would say we we have ordinances in place um, and that would be something that I can get with uh, Robin and, and code enforcement to, to see if we can beef up any of that okay very good all right that's it thank you thank you thank you mr. Roth um, we had mentioned earlier about a workshop next Wednesday so August 4th at 9 a.m. If everybody, any um, questions or do that, we'll check with Mr. <coughs> Perry, but we'll come up with the agenda if you have anything you want to talk about. Um, obviously, you know, we'll talk about it and put it there. Um, the um, one thing, this will be for Robin and maybe Scott, not sure, but um, the legislative enacted a law that says that with our advertising now, um, which we used to have to pay to put in the newspaper if there's an alternative. So I'd like to find out what inf how much we spend and then also if there's an opportunity, if we have the means within our city limits to advertise that um, properly without doing the advertising. So that would be something to maybe if you can bring back to the council and let them make that decision. Um, one of the things that obviously the mayor's office is tasked with is committees and a appointments so that's something that that I take very seriously and when we get in you know there's been some committees that will be appointing we've had some uh, we did an ordinance last week to update our affordable housing committee and um, I've got some uh, applications for that that I'll be bringing forward next week but I also felt it important to do my <coughs> due diligence on the individuals before we just appoint them because you know different situations might not be the the best person for that committee whether it's you know what it is you know but the, i'm just not gonna throw somebody out there that i know nothing about that you know to, to for because again it comes back on all of us so so that will be coming up next week i think we're going to be in a good place with that um the i would really probably you know and i don't know how to thank them any better i mean it was it was ended up being a shorter time than a longer time but Tamara, Corey, and Jeannie, I think probably some of the stuff that they did through our little transition, and I say little, but wasn't little in the, what you did, but it was timing-wise, it was less than what we had hoped for. Um, <coughs> wanted. Um, and Rob's come in and I think seen the, the value to, the, to all our staff, but especially the three that were closest to him. And I'd like to thank you to, to make the, the transition easier and better and, and going forward as well with all the staff you know, throughout the city and that's something that, that I think we can be thankful for, that we have great staff and continue it going forward. So did you reach? I didn't know if you had, you were reaching for the I just thing. wanted to join in okay. my, my, my appreciation to executive staff as well um, to make the transition for me and, and also keep the continuity for you all. I thought that was important from both sides. And just on the workshop, uh, I'll be setting out some of the items that I'm, I'll probably be placing on there. Uh, legislative affairs, government affairs people, and a few other things that uh, have come to my attention. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And the last, oh, oh, go ahead, Patrick. Well, I, I just, on, on the, the compliments to our staff, I, I too would like to, to join you with that because I, I, I got to tell you, not, not really knowing, we were led to believe, um, you know, that we didn't have people in place that were going to be able to pick the ball up and carry it, and that proved, proved to be very inaccurate information. So thank you very much. All right, and then the last thing that I'm going to bring up is a boat ramp. So we know there's been a lot of stuff out there about boat ramps, but um, with things that have come up and the county commissioners um, had tasked County Commission Van Ostenbridge to look at the whole county with boat ramps. Um, one of the things that came up was years ago, they, I guess the county had brought, and I don't know why, what happened to it exactly, but it was a lot of years ago where at the end of our river walk, the water from there over to, I guess it would be Clancy, is it Clancy's? No, uh, Cadillac's. Cat, uh, Caddy's. 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 
from there to caddies um, was suggested to maybe one day become a, a boat launch. And uh, so they're, they're researching it to see it. And I said, well, come to our council and do things, but there would have to be some opportunity to bring to the council. But they're going to see if there's even an opportunity to do it and then bring it forward what the opportunity <coughs> would be. Who's they? The county. So, because they do don't the bail, Don't stuff. bail them out. That would so, be a bad yeah. idea. Well, but I mean, I, I felt that it was important to let them bring something to us and then the council decide. But that's so, already yeah. right in the middle of our, our, our project. Right. Uh, and it could enhance the project no, too. No, it, it would, it would, it would, so. you know, it would not they, enhance it, it would make right. it terrible. That's my opinion. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Roth? Yeah, um, yeah, boat ramps are great. The problem is the, the trucks and trailers that are piling up. I mean, I, I think that sticking, uh, you know, parked trucks and trailers in our thriving downtown area is counterproductive to everything we're trying to and accomplish. That's, that's why with them bringing it up, I brought it up, and then we can yeah. go through it and see what their plan is, you know, what, what they would bring to us and an opportunity to bring it. So. Uh, well, we're 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 trying to create a thriving mm -hmm. downtown. They're yeah. trying to solve a boat problem. Right, we right. we have conflicting interests. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I think some of it. If you, you, I mean, I'm I'm open to look, and obviously you guys will decide. Yeah. But I, you know, I mean, I think there's you can't automatically just say no to something. You got to okay. exactly. bring opportunity and let them try to explain why it would work, and see. And then That's, I'll say no. Right. Then you say. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, you know, I think it's, I mean, obviously to just say no in the outset, I think you look and see if they have some good solutions. Bringing people, it just means more people able to enjoy our Riverwalk Park, and, and it just is setting the table for more people. I, I'm not saying that yay or nay at this point, but I think we'd be um, smart to look to see if that's something that would be a benefit for downtown. If there, yeah, if it would be a benefit, that's yeah, all. I, I, I said yes. I would be willing. To I don't see it as bailing anybody out. out. I, if it's a, if it's a public service for our citizens, I, I think we, we need to at least listen. Well, let, let, let me address that. I mean, if you think that those are great, they are great for the fishing community and the boating community, and I, I do boat, but. Um, if you go over to Palmetto and, and try to get in that parking area around there, you can't get there. And those people are coming from all over South Florida. They're not just uh, Bradenton or Manatee County residents, and they're going to close that. So mm -hmm. we, we've got, I think, well, eight boat ramps in the county, something like that. And they said we should have a minimum of 20. So it, it's a county-wide issue. Um, but to put that in the middle of, of a walkable uh, river walk, uh, I, I just, you know, well, and I, and I, I can't well, believe we'd even consider it. Right. Well, I'm not saying we're, we're, we we got to listen, I believe. That's when people bring stuff. It's, it's, you got to say it. But they're not closing the Palmetto ramp. There was a piece of property that they were for redevelopment that they were allowing people to park on that now it's being redeveloped. Mm -hmm. We're trying to develop our downtown. So if an opportunity comes and somebody brings it to me, I'm going to listen. I'm not going to say I'm going to go 100%. What I, do I think it can help with some development? Probably some, where there may be some things we work through. Probably. But again, I think, and again, if somebody else is going to pay for it and make our part better, and, and again, it's an opinion. There might be better. There might be worse. But I think it's something <coughs> that, as a city, we've got to listen to because it does help our citizens at one point, too. And it also could vitalize. I'm not just saying a, an old dirt boat launch. They got to bring up something that's going to be fantastic for us, and until they even bring it up, we don't know what it is. And I and I want to say I, I I'm not a boater. I'm probably I probably won't ever be using that boat ramp. But you got to realize not everybody can afford to have a dock in their backyard. So it allows other people to enjoy the river, enjoy their boats that can that you know and trailer them up. But of course nobody's going to want to have all those boat trailers parked down there. But I think. If there's a way to come up with some options, I think we can learn from what happened down over in Palmetto um, and what they're having to deal with now. And if it can be done and done well, I think we at least owe it to listen. And, and I'll make you aware of another. You know, we're we're looking at a new development right there at, at Caddy's, which we have a marina there, and they're going to enhance that boat. So now you now you'd be proposing to have two right beside each other competing. Again, then now we've tied up that whole area 
which is a beautiful area that, that you know, it, it would just completely kill the Riverwalk uh, land. Well, and that's not nothing what I would want to do as far as yeah. that. It, it, and, but that, as far that as would be a, a definite uh, death wish on that plan. Well, well, obviously the plan we've got, but is there a way to enhance <laughs> that plan with a living shoreline, well, with a walkable <coughs> shoreline, with all the things that could well, come into it? You're going to put it. a boat ramp in there. You're going to that's eliminate right. all that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what, and that's one of the things I told him. We still have to have the living well, shoreline. I haven't seen boat ramps that's yeah. walkable. But, but right. Maybe, well, but that's again. Can, really, let them come up I with the opportunity. If they can't come up with that opportunity, then it's it's out. But maybe there's an opportunity. So yes. Yeah. And so on. So we're talking about now a redevelopment of that area. I mean, I remember uh, approving a project um, uh, over there where the where the tiki huts are. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, was a, a combination of um, hotel and condominium and restaurants. That was going to be, you know, a very high end, um, and 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 it failed. I mean, it just never, never. Oh, you mean at, at around the corner there? Right, right. Yeah. So there's something uh, going on now that's coming forward. Well, and, and and there should be. I mean, it and 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 for the life of me, I have no idea how that tiki hut ever showed up as a restaurant because it was only to be, uh, it, you know, it was one of those deals where it was to be used for a venue. For like special occasions, the next thing you know, there's a freaking restaurant in there. I see the fire marshal shaking his head with with grills, and and none of that was approved by the city. It just popped up mysteriously, you know, the way things used to happen, and uh, you know, uh, so. But there's supposed to be a multi-million-dollar development going in there. And that again, is, that's, I, would, that's, I wouldn't <laughs> want to hurt that at all. Yeah. But if there's opportunity to listen. <laughs> To things that can either. Yeah. Well, I'd like to have those people come before us and oh, make pr make a presentation yeah. rather than us discuss it without well, that's knowing, knowing all the out. facts. But right. yeah. th th those facts that I just uh, indicated are, are good. Th that that's a hundred fifty million dollar project with that hotel, and our and and a very good, uh, from what plans I've seen, a, a, a marina there, and a walkable area that we're developing with seven million dollars of our tax monies. Uh, on that and to to come up with this idea uh, without uh, a presentation from somebody that it's something fabulous that i haven't seen i'd, I'd rather see you, them come in here and make their presentation and that's why i brought it up so that would be coming so that's that was the only thing they brought they had to bring it up at the county to go the next step i, I, I and i threw that in just because we have plenty of time right yeah <laughs> oh yeah you gotta wait so <laughs> all right um so i think that's all that i've got uh Moving on, department heads, we'll start with Mrs. Melton. I think I can speak on behalf of my coworkers by thanking you for the recognition for our hard work, and we look forward to working with Mr. Perry and his uh, guidance. Thank you, thank you. Mrs. Singer? Uh, nothing new to report from planning. Thank you. Chief Edwards? I just want to give you an early heads up that uh, this will be 20 years for the September 11th um, event so they're planning a luncheon at uh, the grove at a lakewood ranch uh, that'll be september 9th on thursday and memorial service will be september 11th which is a saturday this year uh, again i'll be sending out uh, flyers and, and emails and everything but just an early heads up right. that's it thank you chief bevan thank you um in addition to that i wanted to just mention I belong to the Tampa Bay Area Chiefs Association, and that's a organization that covers Pasco, Hernando, Hillsboro, um, Pinellas, and comes down to Manatee. Uh, every year they hold a uh, an event. This one happens to be on um, September 11th. However noteworthy, they have an award given out every year. Uh, they have a few awards given out every year. Manatee has never won any of them. Um, that always frustrates me, but um, this year, uh, the Business Partner of the Year Award, we nominated our Mission Barbecue, our very own Mission Barbecue, which I'm not sure you all know, they, they really do incredible things for both fire and police, um, store number 43. I actually went somewhere, and I, um, all the chiefs were there, and I told them we had nominated them. They're like, oh, that's a great idea. We should have thought of that. Anyway, they won. <laughs> and so uh, I'm very, very pleased about that. I know that the corporate headquarters are, are thrilled that Mission Barbecue is um, going to be getting this honor, and so I'll be there to help them receive that on a on Saturday night. But just so I let you know about that, I'm not going to 
uh, be any more proud of my folks. I think you all sh saw it in the memo I sent out and copied you all on our continuing accreditation, very important for us, and, and really uh, that there were, there were no areas of concern, there were no fixes, there were no anything. You can still receive your uh, reaccreditation and, and have some issues that need to be resolved. They discussed one on the, the outgoing meeting. Um, they wanted us to change a word in one of our 240 policies, and yeah, they really do get that specific. Apparently on their drive home, they thought about it. They called me back that night and said, you know, we, we thought about it. We kind of took another look, and we actually feel you covered covered it with what you had. So we're going in with a, a perfect uh, reaccreditation. Re I'm proud of that. Yesterday, we had FDLE here on site for our CGIS accreditation, and um, I'm happy to report that went uh, perfectly as well. They found no issues of concern, and they go back 20 years as well and look at our records it's pretty much housed within our communication center, so um, we're kind of on a on a high right now, and I'm I'm really thankful that uh, um, everybody really rose to the occasion on that, especially the the officers. I think you saw we we had an officer. He was the newest one out of the field training program. It was his third day solo. Mm -hmm. He comes walking in the station, and that's who they decide to interview about how to properly bag submit. Um, you know, evidence, and I'll have to tell you, we're all sitting behind going, oh boy, this is, <laughs> um, but he did perfect, and so that just speaks to the training that's going on um, down there and, and the professionalism of the officers down there, so thank you, and thank you for your support, that's all. And anyone? I just thank you for recognizing Mission Barbecue. I agree with you. Uh, my husband is a Vietnam era vet, and when he came back our country was not such a grateful nation, and so they're almost hide that they're vets. And when he went in there and they realized he was a vet, they gave him free stuff and just recognized did him. So give, did they give him the banana pudding? Yes, they did. Yep. He got. They gave it to me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think you're right. We need to we need to raise them up because uh, I do appreciate them. They, and they the food's were, great. <laughs> they, it is, and I'll tell you, we came in with the approach. Um, I wrote the nomination, but I had every law enforcement entity in Manatee County write supporting letters. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, the, they're just a great organization for us. And so bravo, bravo to them. And the last thing, thank you for approving the, the backpacks for um, the first day of school. The plan with that is to equip all of our officers who are going to go out to the schools, um, probably our elementary, middle, and sit there and um, try to eyeball what child might show up without a backpack. Every kid, kid should show up the first day of school with a backpack, and if they don't have one, we're going to slip one to them with uh, school supplies. So that's, that's always a fun thing to, to give away. Do you think you have enough? Do you need more? Um, I asked for 96 because a couple companies donated some to us, so I think it brings us up to about 140. I think so. Okay. All right, and thank you, Chief. I know uh, Manager Knight did a great job through the accreditation with the whole staff, and she takes that very seriously, and, and uh, kudos to you. I mean, it, again, where we were five years ago and where we are today is much, the city is much to be proud of, of your leadership, and thank you for that. So. Thanks, sir. Mr. Garbage, I mean, Jim. <laughs> well, I'm so. I, 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 I don't have anything to add to that story, but I will tell you that um, after um, the presentation at last council related to Lewis Park. Um, our consultants have prepped the drawings and they are in the process of getting ready to submit the SIP permit to us, which is the first step in getting this on the road to uh, construction. So um, that is moving forward and we greatly look forward to uh, working with the Rotary on that project and seeing it come to fruition. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. One thing I forgot to mention. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. McClellan and his department. We had kind of a <coughs> interesting thing happen over at Lewis Park where early one morning we had a car catch fire. <coughs> and it damaged the fence. And I don't know if the arborist has been able to look at the little magnolia tree that got super singed. It doesn't look healthy. It does not look healthy. But um, <coughs> I was 
taking Mr. Perry around, kind of showing him the area, and I was telling him about it, and I drove up, and dang, that fence got fixed awfully quickly. Thank you so much. And there were many in the neighborhood that noticed that. So thank you, and please <coughs> thank our staff. Mm -hmm. I'll let them know. Thank you. All right, Mr. Perry? Nothing further, Mayor, <laughs> Council. Mr. Rudisell? I don't have anything. Mr. All right, thank you. Anything else for the good of the order? Anything else? All right, we'll be adjourned. <laughs>